My name is Mukhtar Al Khanchali. I am a Yemeni American social entrepreneur. I was supposed to go to law school, and in that process, I fell in love with coffee and the history of coffee from Yemen. And I think sometimes, as, as Muslims living in the West, we're trying to find positive narratives about who we are and our identities. So when I found out about the history of coffee and the Muslim and the Yemeni history of coffee, it really um, made me very interested in this. I didn't know much about business or about coffee for that matter, but I decided to change my idea from going to law school and go and become a coffee farmer. I mean, I thought about it. I wasn't really interested in material success, and I thought that, you know, what am I going to, what is the legacy that I'm going to live behind? There must be more to life. And it's very difficult. It's very, there was, these were very difficult questions that I asked myself in my early 20s. And through a series of incredible events, I found out about coffee, and I found this is something I wanted to do. I really loved it. The, the, the science of it, using our senses, and most support, I like the idea of, uh, as a way for social impact. I thought it was a very sustainable model where it wasn't about giving people charity, it was about helping people uplift themselves. I understood the coffee market in a much higher level, and so these farmers in Yemen, and this is a sad reality, most of farmers around the world only get eight cents per dollar of what they produce. And no one understands where their food comes from. We're very disconnected. So I thought I would try to see how I can shorten the distance between coffee farmers and between consumers. And I went to Yemen, which was very difficult to do that in the middle of the war. I didn't know how difficult it was going to be. But I just, you know, when you're young, you have, you're not, your mind is not fully developed. <laughs> and I just kind of went in there and, you know, in Islam we have the concept of tawakkul, that we just kind of have a, a faith in Allah and kind of see where that, and believe in that, that real faith. And, I did that because my idea was I, maybe if I can be successful, then I can be of benefit to people. Coffee begins somewhere between Ethiopia and Yemen. There's a difference of opinion. I'm probably the only Yemeni who thinks coffee began in Ethiopia. Uh, it began, it grew there wildly, but the first people to take the plant and, and plant it and to, and to harvest it and to roast it and to make this drink were Yemenis. And actually, the Ottoman Empire, Turkey played an incredibly important role in this because they controlled Yemen and there was a city they controlled, a port called Mocha. In Arabic, we pronounce it Al-Makha. And they were really the, the link of Yemen with the world through this trade. When coffee came to Europe, the drink of choice was alcohol. So they were always drunk. We hear of the dark ages. So when coffee comes from Yemen, through the Ottoman Empire, through Vienna, through London and, and Paris, people for the first time have a drink that doesn't numb their senses, that actually heightens their intellectual curiosity, the creativity, and you see a correla correlation of the entry of coffee into Europe and the Enlightenment period, this sort of revolution. Currently, coffee is the second most consumed drink after water. It's a huge global phenomenon, uh, billions of cups per day. And I love this part of the coffee's history, what it has done for humankind. So as a Yemeni, as a Muslim living in the West, oftentimes the media portrays a very negative view of us that we're terrorists, that we have no culture, that we haven't given the world anything but negative things. And I believe, you know, for those out there who love coffee, they can thank these Muslims in Yemen, who actually were Sufi monks, Muslim scholars who first came and they believed that coffee was a spiritual drink, that it was meant for them to help them worship Allah at night. So at night they'd get together in these long and these beautiful rooms and they would make dhikr sessions and remember of God and they would pass around the coffee drink to help them stay awake because in the daytime they would work in the field and they're very tired. So coffee's first culture was a spiritual culture. It was about getting closer to Allah. And I really enjoyed that. I know that in, in Ottoman Empire in the 1500s through 1600s, if a woman didn't receive her daily quota of coffee, she had the right to divorce her husband. I have my company Port of Mocha and we produce uh, alhamdulillah, um, some of the world's best rated coffees. Um, we've won many awards. In 2017, we're rated the number one coffee in the world by the Coffee Review. And our coffees are, are celebrated in different cafes. Um, but I also have a nonprofit called the Mocha Institute, which is where I put a lot of my time now. And really what we do is we believe in the power of coffee to help rebuild the country. We believe in helping people help themselves. So coffee, we think that it can be a way to economically empower people 